Hi, and welcome to the Airline Weekly Lounge. This is your host, Edward Russell, and I'm joined by Boeing's Vice President of Commercial Marketing, Darren Holst, to talk about the Airframer's 20-year outlook. And in a listener note, we taped this at the Farnborough Air Show, so there's a bit of background noise. Thank you and enjoy. Hi, I'm here with Darren Holst, Vice President of Commercial Marketing at Boeing, and we're talking at the Farnborough Air Show about uh, the current market outlook that Boeing put out over the weekend. Uh, Darren, can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure. I think the, the one thing, if I wanted to just talk about a theme, is resilience of the market. I think we've seen over the last two years the most challenging time the commercial aviation industry has ever faced, and yet the perspective that we talked about two years ago has largely come to fruition as we move through 2022. And as markets and as restrictions have dropped over the last six months, we've seen probably more resilience than we may have ex- even previously predicted because of uh, the pent-up demand in the marketplace, uh, both in domestic and international markets. And I think that gives us the confidence in still uh, where the market's going to recover within the next 18 months, and then from there, accelerate back to pre-crisis trends, give or take, as we look at the 20-year forecast. And our projection is just over 41,000 jets uh, to be delivered new um, in the next 20 years. You mentioned resilience and sort of going back to pre-crisis trends, but if I, if I look at this correctly, uh, the 20-year forecast is actually a little below where you forecast it to be in 2019. I mean, what, what's going on there? Yeah, I think, I think it's important to kind of talk about some of the, the reasons why and some of also just compare. Um, the, the forecast is lower than it was last year, but not in a significant or fundamentally different way. Um, two things are driving the change from last year. One, we've removed Russia from the addressable market in our forecast. That's kind of very finite in terms of right now it's not a market that we can serve, and so we pulled that out. Last year's forecast was right around 1,500 aircraft in that space over 20 years. So you can see that made up about half-ish of the demand that we took out of the forecast. The rest of it is uh, a second decade slowing of our long-term growth rates, both based on kind of near-term GDP um, slowing and kind of the sustainability um, issues and challenges the industry faces over the next 20 years, especially in short-haul markets, kind of uh, brought our long-term growth rates down from 4% to 3.8%. And one easy way to think about this is for every tenth of a percent of 20-year growth rate, it's about 700 aircraft worth of demand. Okay, so multiply by two, that's 1,500 aircraft. You take Russia out, and then you add a year of growth, and that's kind of the the parts of the equation that make for that slight decline. I mean, this is, you know, low single-digit change to our forecast. It's not a fundamental change, but I think it reflects kind of our view of the dynamics in the market today. Got it. Now, I, I, you said that it's it's sort of lower on the outer end. Um, the 10 years, yep. so we're talking about just until 2032, yep. that has gone up a little yes. bit. In fact, it's up near where we were projecting, say, pre-COVID, because we drop a historically bad year in 2021 from our 10-year forecast and add what we would consider more of like a trend year of growth in 2031. And so that phenomenon is what drives an increase in the near-term forecast. So it's a function of recovery and resilience and, and as airlines refleet and grow. Absolutely. And we're seeing a lot yeah. of that refleeting. And every, I mean, we're, we're talking at the Farm yeah. Show and Delta Airlines yeah. announced a major 737 MAX order. And they're looking at replacing 800, 737-800s in their fleet yep. with, with MAX 10s. So within the outlook, what's uh, what are you seeing the, the trends with narrow body versus wide body? What, on sure. The side? I think... Um, if we go through each of the segments, obviously the, the big markets that we address are single aisle, wide body, freighter, and then there's also the regional jets, which we don't address, but we forecast. Um, going from small to large, we see the regional jets as, as really the replacement market. We don't see growth in that space, but obviously there are thousands of jets, so we see over 2,000 aircraft in that space. Single aisle is where we truly do still see the growth market. We see the fleet uh, from a single aisle perspective doubling over 20 years. The wide bodies, I think if we're looking year to year to year on the wide bodies, we probably took a little bit more growth out of the long term in terms of wide bodies, but that fleet will still grow by between 70 and 80% over the next 20 years. So it's not not a growth market. It's just we took a little bit of growth out of that second half. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that's uh, very interesting. Of course, 
as we look out into the, the second half, you'll have a triple seven X should be flying yeah. Yeah. some big jets out there. Yeah. I think it's important to note, like I said, um, when you look at the fleet passenger wide bodies today, make up right around 4,000 jets. Uh, we see that fleet growing in the neighborhood of uh, seven to 8,000, you know, over the course of the next 20 years. So this is a, still a growth market. And so, the 777X replaces uh, large wide bodies, whether they're four engine or two engine aircraft in the long term. And so, so kind of like a replacement space as the market grows. And then the versatility of midsize aircraft like the 787 kind of become the backbone of that uh, long haul market. For sure, for sure. All right, let's take a quick break, Darren. Okay. All right, and we're back. So we've talked a little about the robust demand trend that Boeing sees. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion here at the show about the supply side of things, be it labor shortages, supply chain, and everything. What what are you seeing on that side? I think just like any other big industrial company, uh, we we see some of the same challenges, whether it's um, our own you know resources or supply chain challenges uh, in terms of the global supply chain that we have. Um, but I think it's a temporary. You know, phenomenon. It's something that you know we're working through. In many cases, we already have um, uh, contingency, you know, to, to avoid major issues. But um, a temporary situation where it, it's not going to be fundamentally changing our ability to produce for the market. Okay, excellent. I mean, we saw that Boeing's you know, your production rates sort of stepped up a little bit in mm -hmm. um, in the second quarter. Though I believe Stan Deal said April and May there were few issues, but it's it's picked up again and you're you're always on the Mac side. Right. I, knows it. right. I'm not a supply chain expert, but obviously the trajectory of the deliveries has improved um, and that's a function of both our production and uh, the aircraft that we have yet to deliver from uh, the stored 737s in the market. Excellent. Very good. And then, so we've talked about this before and it's, it's something I know that you have a lot to say, but the middle of the market. That's a that's a hot topic. I, you know, Airbus has garnered lots of orders for their A three twenty one Neo. Yeah. Of course, Boeing. You, like you said we picked up a Max ten order today from Delta. I mean, what do you think about the middle of the market? Where does that stand? I think the the, the fascinating discussion starts with how you define the middle of the market. Um, is it the middle size of aircraft? Is it the middle capability of aircraft? Is it both? Is it one or the other? And I think if you if you consider it's something that includes any one or all of those, then um, obviously the middle of the market is an important space going forward. As we see maturing markets, as we see uh, frequencies, saturation in some key markets where you don't need more flights, you need more seats. Clearly, there's demand in that space. Um, the, the part that maybe I'm not necessarily quite as bullish on is just long, thin, single aisle um, Networks. So, like the let's say the 757 going from Newark yeah. to Oslo or something. Absolutely. Yeah. So, clearly, there are markets where that capability works and works perfectly. However, on the bottom side, it's constrained by range capability and the inability to carry cargo. Um, on the top side, you obviously run into where wide body aircraft either provide the density of, of demand that is required as well as the range flexibility to go more than just just across the ocean, but well into you know other networks and give that versatility. So I think there's a niche. Some airlines absolutely are going to benefit from that long thin single out, but we think it's kind of a hundreds of aircraft proposition instead of a thousands of aircraft. And I have and to say, Airbus has already picked up hundreds of aircraft yeah. for the oh, A321 XLR. Close to 500. No, right. no question. Yeah. But I think um, what we're looking at is most of those aircraft are going to be um, already. They're already ordered for what these airlines are looking for. And I think we're probably going to see some dynamics around, you know, how they're being used and if they're successful or not, because the risk that airlines take is if you commit to an aircraft that's not optimized for a short and medium haul, you're carrying around that capability on every part of your network if you're not flying from Newark to Oslo or something like that. Absolutely. So and there's a trade. Yeah. I mean, airlines talk about it all the time uh, with, with aircraft. You don't want to buy too much airplane. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or not enough or airplane. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and I know that you've talked a lot about sort of the Max family being yeah. a key selling point. Yeah. Of course, the seven, eight, nine, and ten, eighty two hundred. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, I mean it's a versatile family. I think that's our 
from, from my perspective, that's the key value driver for the 737 is the range of sizes and the range of capabilities that the market needs. Um, are we going to, do we have a plane that flies 5,000 miles? No, but we do in our 787 family. Uh, what we do have is the, the family with the lowest cost per seat across the entire single aisle spectrum, whether you're at 150 or 220 seats, you're going to have the lowest cost per seat. And I think as airlines look forward, the, the risk reward value proposition is, is still tilted towards, you know, risk, right? Because airlines want the capability, but they want to have uh, it at the lowest risk because ultimately that helps them compete more favorably in a market that's increasingly competitive. And so that's why I think, you know, the eight, the nine or the 8,200 are still the heart of the market in terms of demand, but we need the 10 for airlines to, to leverage and to take advantage of those extra seats at lower cost and the seven to help airlines enter that mainline space on a common platform. Absolutely. And of course, we're seeing a lot of cost pressure in the market right now amongst the airlines. Yeah. So it's important, but, uh, you know, a network planner once told me that he, you know, loved the 900 ER or the versus A321 yeah. over because it was just, it was a, uh, more seats for the same yeah. fixed cost, essentially, of fly, you know, of a smaller yeah. plane. It was easy to, and of course, we'll see that again with the Max Ten when that comes in. You're able to, to flex up with basically the same. Yeah, I and and I'm also like a recovering network planner, and <laughs> so I think that versatility is is so important. But it's 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 fascinating to see how airlines actually deploy it. You know, so empirically watching how aircraft are deployed in the system, seeing how the Maxes are being deployed, but for example, by Southwest on. Hawaii, the transcon type routes where they can leverage the efficiency as well as, you know, how that aircraft can be deployed. That's what we're going to see going forward with airplanes like the 9 and the 10. Definitely. And I'm looking forward to seeing the 10 and the 7 get out into the fleets <laughs> and see see where those go. Yep. For sure, yep. it's, it's going to be fascinating. And maybe with some new customers too, like an Allegiant or other airlines that haven't flown new uh, Boeing wide or Boeing uh, single aisle aircraft. You're right. The Allegiant order that six months ago yeah. took us all by surprise, and it's <laughs> already slipped to yeah. the back of mind here at Farnborough. Yeah. Great. Well, Darren, thank you so much for joining uh, on the Airline Weekly Lounge this week. It's, it's a pleasure to have you, and uh, yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of the Airline Weekly Lounge podcast. Check out airlineweekly.com for a new issue every Monday and updates on the latest airline news throughout the week.